Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're really digging into something big. The convergence of artificial intelligence, AI, and building information modeling, or BIM. And look, calling this just a software upgrade, that really doesn't cut it. Not even close. No, it feels much more like a new ecosystem entirely. People are already calling it BIM 2.0. Mm. So our mission today, what we want to unpack for you, focuses on three key things. First, just how big is this transformation going to be by, say, 2030? It's significant. Second, what practical steps, what strategies do professionals like you need to start adopting now? And third, which specific AI platforms or agents are obviously, you know, leading this charge? Right. And just to give you a sense of the urgency here, Bro. the research we've looked at suggests AI could speed up design processes by like 50%. A huge number. Huge. And slash project cost by maybe up to 32% by 2030. That's mm. Well, that's fundamentally rewriting the playbook for the whole AEC industry. It absolutely is. And I think the core idea to grasp here is the philosophical shift. BIM 1.0, you know, is essentially a very sophisticated digital filing cabinet, a documentation tool, really. Right. Keeping track of everything. Exactly. But AI moves us into what you could call building information optimization. Yeah. It's turning that static model into um, an intelligent design partner, something that can actually help make decisions. An active partner, not just a record. Precisely. And the market sees it coming. We're looking at projections for AI in construction globally, potentially hitting $12.1 billion by 2030. So this isn't some far off theory. It's happening and it's accelerating. OK, let's unpack that first point, then the transformation itself. If BIM 1.0 involved all that painstaking manual input, what does this shift to a more predictive BIM 2.0 actually look like You know, on the ground? How does the process change for someone working on a project? Well, it looks like almost an inversion of the traditional workflow. Instead of starting by manually drawing the geometry, BIM 2.0 uses AI algorithms to generate optimized design options. Generate them. Based on performance criteria you set up front. So you define the goals, maybe maximum natural light, minimum material waste, structural constraints, budget. And the AI explores ways to achieve that. It determines the form. So less focus on drawing lines, more on defining the rules. Exactly. We're talking about potentially automating uh, maybe up to 60% of what we think of as routine BIM tasks by 2030. 60%. Wow. Does that mean then, is the human role shifting entirely from like drawing the shape to setting the parameters for the AI to work within? That's a great way to put it. The human expertise pivots. It becomes about high-level parameter setting, applying creative judgment, defining the right problems for the AI to solve, the heavy lifting, the iteration. That's where generative design comes in. It's the real accelerator here. Generative design. Tell us more about that. So it uses these AI algorithms to explore just an incredibly vast range of potential solutions, all based on those constraints you mentioned, budget, structure, energy use, whatever. And the speed difference. It's dramatic. A human team might explore, what, maybe 10, 20 design alternatives over weeks. If they're lucky. Right. AI systems. Yeah. They can evaluate thousands of viable options in a matter of hours. Okay. That sheer volume must be where that 50% speed increase comes from. Can you give us yeah. a concrete example? Something that shows that speed and complexity analysis happening together. Sure. Look at a platform like um, Cubic. They claim they can produce optimized multi-floor layouts in literally two to three seconds per design option. Just seconds. Seconds. And crucially, it's not just drawing boxes. It's simultaneously integrating really complex factors that usually take ages for humans to analyze things like daylight penetration, acoustics, even optimizing internal traffic flow patterns. That kind of multi-objective optimization done that quickly. That's completely new. Okay, so that handles the geometry, the layout. But you mentioned AI brings predictive power too. That sounds like it changes things beyond just design, like risk management, estimation. Oh, absolutely, predictive analytics. Yeah, It uses machine learning, ML, to learn from enormous amounts of historical project data. What kind of data? Schedules, costs, change orders, outcomes from thousands of past projects. Mm -hmm. It learns to forecast critical things like uh, project risks, potential delays, likely cost overruns. So it's spotting patterns we might miss. Exactly. Patterns invisible to human estimators. Take NPLAN, for instance. They've analyzed something like over 750,000 historical construction schedules. That represents, what, over $2 trillion in construction spending. That's a staggering amount of data. It is. And by analyzing it, their system can identify hidden risks and complexities, achieving up to, they report, a 30% improvement in estimation accuracy. That's huge for project certainty. Okay, so we have generative design speeding things up, predictive analytics handling risk, but there's always been this massive bottleneck, code compliance. 
yeah. checking against building codes. It's complex, often ambiguous legal text. It eats up time. Where does AI fit into automated code checking or ACC? ACC is a huge focus area. Our sources suggest, yeah, over 60% of reviewed research papers are looking at applying AI and ML here. Oh, what's the approach? Mostly through natural language processing NLP. Trying to teach computers to read and understand those dense, sometimes vague regulatory documents and convert them into rules, the machine can actually check against the BIM model. Sounds tricky. It is. And the consensus seems to be that just one approach isn't enough. You likely need hybrid systems, combining the sort of strict, precise logic of older rule-based systems with the flexibility of machine learning models that can better handle the, you know, the fuzziness of real-world legal language. Okay, so that paints a picture of where we're headed, this BIM 2.0 future. Let's pivot to focus two then, adoption. If this is the destination, how do professionals, how do firms start fostering these new workflows now? How do you make that practical shift? I think the key is to frame it as augmentation, not replacement, at least for now. AI enhances BIM. It takes over those mundane, repetitive tasks we talked about, the basic modeling, the routine drafting checks, maybe initial clash detection. Freeing up people for, for the complex stuff. High-level creativity, strategic decision-making, client interaction, things AI really can't touch effectively yet. And the impact is tangible. We see figures suggesting AI integration can lead to up to a 30% cut in planning time just for construction schedule optimization. So focusing on augmentation is the starting point. What are the specific technologies people need to start getting familiar with? The practical on-ramps, if you will. Yeah, good question. I'd say there are three main tech pillars enabling this right now. First, definitely NLP and those large language models, LLMs. We mentioned them for code checking, but they're also crucial for streamlining documentation generally faster data retrieval from project records, TGPT and similar models helping interpret requirements. Okay, NLP and LLMs, what's number two? Number two has to be computer vision CV. This is about connecting the digital model to the physical reality on site. How so? Using cameras, drones, laser scans, CV can track actual construction progress against the BIM schedule. It can help convert those uh, dense point cloud scans from a, a site survey into an accurate up-to-date BIM model. And maybe most importantly, it can spot safety hazards in real time on the construction site. Big potential for worker protection. Makes sense. And the third pillar? That would be the integration of digital twins and the Internet of Things, or IoT. This really extends the value of BIM way beyond the construction phase into building operations. Creating living models. Exactly. You integrate AI with sensors embedded throughout the building, IoT sensors measuring temperature, occupancy, equipment status. This data feeds back into the BIM model, creating a dynamic digital twin that reflects reality. And the benefit. Continuous optimization. The AI can analyze the real-time data and adjust building systems HVAC, lighting for maximum efficiency or occupant comfort. We have documented examples, like the Hague City Hall, achieving a reported 39% reduction in energy consumption using a digital twin. That's a massive operational saving. Okay, the potential is clearly enormous, but adoption, it's never straightforward, is it? We have to talk about the hurdles. What's stopping more firms from jumping on this BIM 2.0 train right now? Yeah, there are definitely significant barriers. The research points to a few consistent ones. First, the initial investment cost can be high. Integrating these systems isn't cheap. Understandable. What else? Data is a huge one. Often, historical project data is fragmented, inconsistent, stored in different formats. Cleaning and preparing that data for AI is a massive task. Then there's the skills gap, a lack of AI literacy among many current AEC professionals. People just don't know how to use these tools yet. Exactly. And finally, there are significant ethical questions. As we start delegating more decision-making to AI, especially in critical areas like structural design or safety, who's accountable if something goes wrong, algorithmic bias is also a real concern. Right. Lots to navigate there. But assuming we overcome those, professionals must adapt. If you want to be relevant in, say, 2035, the old skill set isn't going to be enough. What's the mandatory hybrid skill set people need to start building? It really boils down to merging that traditional design and construction expertise with, I'd say, two core AI era competencies. Okay, what's the first one? The first is absolutely data literacy. Professionals need to understand data, how it's structured, how to interpret the outputs from machine learning models, and critically, how to manage and curate the high quality data sets these AI systems need. You know the saying, garbage in, garbage out. It's never been truer. Okay, data literacy, got it. And the second competency, this sounds like it relates directly to those generative tools we discussed. It does. The second is AI prompt engineering. 
As these design tools become more conversational, more generative, being able to craft effective prompts, basically translating your complex creative ideas and technical constraints into language the AI understands, that's becoming as vital as knowing how to use traditional CAD or BIM software. So less about clicking buttons, more about writing precise instructions. In many ways, yes. The future of interacting with these tools involves writing powerful, precise descriptions of what you need. It's a new kind of design communication. Fascinating. Okay, let's move to our third focus, the tools themselves. Who's actually out there leading the charge? What platforms are integrating AI into BIM workflows effectively right now? We're seeing the leaders emerge across the project lifecycle. For that early stage, generative design and planning, while well, Autodesk is integrating AI features directly into Revit 2025 for things like automated design exploration and clash detection. So it's becoming part of the mainstream tool set. Increasingly, yes. Then for more specialized, heavy-duty construction schedule optimization, you have platforms like Alice Technologies that use AI to generate and test literally millions of potential schedule options. They report achieving an average 17% reduction in overall project duration for their users. 17% faster project delivery? Mm -hmm. That's significant. And what about tools specifically for that really rapid conceptual site planning stage? Yeah, there are specialized tools there too. Think Makeit.ai or TestFit. They focus specifically on things like automated floor plans generation, or running real-time feasibility studies for site planning, helping optimize unit counts, parking, minimizing waste, right at the very beginning when those decisions have the biggest financial impact. Right, getting it right early. Now, I was really struck by the Zaha Hadid Architects case study, a very high-profile creative firm using this tech. What did they find? What was their experience? ZHA are definitely pioneers here. They integrated various cutting-edge AI tools, generative image models like Delhi to collaborative platforms like NVIDIA Omniverse, and the results were pretty stunning. They reported a 50% productivity increase during their mid-stage design preparation. 50%? How did that translate? It meant they could generate two to three times more high-quality design proposals, especially in really intense competitive bidding situations. Give them a real edge. But what was their key takeaway? Was it AI replacing designers? No, absolutely not. Their crucial insight, and I think this is key for everyone, is that AI acts as a co-pilot or an assistant. It massively accelerates iteration and exploration of possibilities. Mm -hmm. But the human architect, the human engineer, their creative judgment and validation, especially around complex things like buildability or nuanced design intent, that remains absolutely critical. The AI suggests the human decides and refines. A powerful partnership then. Okay, finally, let's look beyond design and construction. Facility management, FM. How does AI extend the BIM model's life and value after the building is handed over and occupied? Primarily through predictive maintenance, or PPM. This is a huge value add. AI analyzes real-time data from building systems, HVAC, elevators, whatever, using those IoT sensors we talked about. To predict failures before they happen. Exactly. Predict equipment failures, schedule maintenance proactively. This minimizes unexpected downtime, reduces repair costs, and actually extends the lifespan of expensive building assets. Systems like um, R8 Technologies Digital Operator are examples here. And beyond just maintenance? You have broader platforms, integrated workplace management systems, or IWMS, like I IBM Truriga. They use AI for more holistic facility management, analyzing spatial usage in real time, understanding occupancy patterns, automatically optimizing lighting and temperature for both energy savings and occupant well-being. It keeps the building running smarter long after construction ends. What a comprehensive look at BIM 2.0. Okay, let's try to summarize the key takeaways for you listening. This AI BIM revolution, it's not hype. It promises really radical improvements, huge efficiency gains, potentially significant cost savings like that 32% figure, and ultimately just smarter, better performing designs. Um. And the imperative for professionals is clear and immediate. Start upskilling now, focusing on those two core areas, getting comfortable with data literacy and learning the art of AI prompt engineering. And I just reinforce that core value proposition. AI is here to augment human ability. It handles the brunt work, the repetitive tasks, the heavy data analysis, freeing up you, the expert, for what humans do best. Creativity, critical judgment, navigating complexity, making those nuanced decisions. Well said. But maybe here's a final provocative thought to leave you with. This shift towards machine learning, especially in generative design or analysis, introduces something new, non-deterministic results. Meaning? 
the AI might not give the exact same answer every time. Potentially, yes. Even with the same inputs, there can be slight variations. And that makes people, understandably, nervous for critical processes like, say, automated building permit checks. You want certainty there. Of course. However, here's the irony our sources pointed out. While we worry about the potential, maybe unpredictable errors of AI models, we currently have almost no data quantifying the error rate of human experts doing those same tasks manually. How often do manual code compliance checks miss something critical? We don't really track it systematically. That's a really interesting point. We're holding AI to a standard we don't even measure for humans. Right. So the path forward isn't just about building better, more reliable, hybrid AI BIM systems to mitigate that AI uncertainty. It's also about the industry finally establishing baselines. We need to start measuring the historical human error rate in these processes. Only then can we ensure that as we use AI to build smarter, we're also building demonstrably safer than before. Food for thought.